Welcome to the EKG Guy. My name is Dr. Anthony Kashu. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Now, either you're coming back for another case, which is awesome, or it's your first time. Either way, so glad you could join us today. Um, now, we're going to be doing the cases right from our free practice uh, site where you can have registered for free. So uh, many of you are already on it, but if not, this is uh, the site right here, practice.ekgguy.com. So simply go there. You could register for free, get started, and uh, we'll get through this case. Now, I know there's many of you, and it's always amazing to see those that continue to follow us. Follow us on Facebook. There's now over you know, 1.3 million of you. So uh, truly a blessing. Never thought this would happen. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the case. So here we have an ECG uh, from a 62-year-old female with palpitations. Notice the regular atrial ventricular activity here. However, they're occurring at different rates. The rate here for the atrial rhythm appears to be slightly above 300 beats per minute. If we look, for instance, at the V1, that may be the, the best way to see some of that atrial activity here. And if you look at uh, one of the P waves, let's say here, this wave here, that atrial activity, and the next one here, okay? So it's slightly within that range. It's regular. Again, all of these are occurring at regular intervals, uh, but the activity is less than one of the small boxes. So it's above 300 beats per minute. One way to get that rhythm in this regular fast atrial activity is 1,500, and it's a probably about 4.5 five of those small boxes and so that would give you a rate near say 332 beats per minute and that's looking at again the atrial activity okay so the atrial rate uh, quite high over 300 beats per minute on the other hand if we look at the ventricular rate uh, it was actually reported so the machine gives us report 85 beats per minute so let's look at it ourselves so we know that the R to R intervals are regular throughout, so this is a regular ventricular rhythm. If we were to find an R wave that falls on this uh, one of the thick lines and the next one, next R wave is there, well, we could do 300 divided by the number of large boxes between it, so it's one, two, three, four. So if you do 300 over four is 75 beats per minute, and then 300 over three, okay, uh, is 100 beats per minute, you can see that the rate actually falls uh, in between that. The rate that the machine got was 85 beats per minute. So that's one way to do it given this regular rhythm. Now the other way is that we know that from beginning all the way to the end of this 12 lead, the standard 12 lead ECG is 10 seconds, 10 seconds times 6 is 60 seconds, which is one minute. So you have one minute, and meaning that if you count the ventricular complexes, so we can find the ventricular rate by doing the number of, say, QRS complexes or any ventricular activity times six to get an estimate of the ventricular rate in beats per minute. So let's do that here. So uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, right? And if you uh, to or to see that one, you could see there's also a fifteenth one. So 15 uh, QRS complexes, and if we multiply that 15 times 6, we get 90 beats per minute. So close to that 85, right, that we were mentioning before. So anyways, if you take a look at that and you estimate this atrial to ventricular rate, well, it looks like there's almost a 4 to 1 AV conduction. In other words, if we were to take the 333 divided by the 85 beats per minute, so again, the atrial rate over the ventricular rate, uh, what this gives you is a ratio of near 4 to 1, meaning 4 atrial activity to the 1 ventricular activity. So this is a what we call a 4 to 1 AV conduction, atrial to ventricular. And then notice that we have what's called this sawtooth pattern of atrial activity. Okay, clearly seen in these inferior leads. So let us just erase this. So the main thing that we've mentioned is that we have a four to one AV activity or AV conduction. Okay, and we mentioned that in these inferior leads, what we see are these the sawtooth pattern. Okay, and these the sawtooth pattern uh, here is characteristic of atrial flutter. Okay, so atrial flutter. Okay, 
so atrial flutter. And what we see are these actually inverted um, flutter waves. So flutter waves are the atrial activity that we see uh, in the inferior lead. So we can clearly see these inverted uh, waves that are occurring here, as well as the absence of any isoelectric baseline in those inferior leads. There's no baseline. However, if you look at V1, what we see here, as well as in this lead down here, notice these, okay, these are all clear positive deflections, small positive flutter waves, and there's also a distinct baseline uh, that you could see that is occurring essentially between them, okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. So given that both the negatively deflected, the lack of baseline in the inferior leads, plus the positive deflections, those small, uh, as well as the isoelectric baseline that you could see it in V1, we call this typical atrial flutter, okay? So typical atrial flutter with a four to one AV conduction. Now, sometimes the AV conduction is difficult to see. That's why finding the rate is a good way to get you there. Some may look at uh, this, you know, rhythm and say, okay, I can see that there's a flutter, uh, atrial flutter given the inferior lead, and maybe they count one, two, three, okay? So three atrial activity to one uh, ventricular activity, and they call it three to one. But what's happening is that there's actually another one. It continues throughout. So it is not, it's buried essentially in that QRS complex. It's not three to one, it's four to one. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If you were to look at these uh, inferior leads, if you were to essentially draw this out, it looks like this. So it just continues throughout. And because of that, if you were to say, take all these deflections, so notice you have one, two, three, four, for this one QRS, that's where the four to one comes from. And then it repeats itself, okay? Uh, again, uh, throughout, and it's always that four to one. So this is a regular, sometimes you could have variable AV conduction that can occur in atrial flutter, and it's not the case here. Okay, now the most common ratios that we tend to see, um, in this case, we have a constant fixed ratio of the flutter waves, which is the four to QRS complexes. Okay, so four to one. The most common ones we tend to see are even ratios. So four to one, as in this case, also two to one is common. Um, the variable can also occur where you have, uh, you cannot tell. So sometimes there's a four to one, maybe two to one and three to one. And that's what we call variable AV conduction, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Know that you can have a setting, which is not here, where you have a complete heart block, third degree AV block, in which you have atrial flutter as the atrial rhythm, and then you have a junctional or escape, uh, ventricular escape rhythm that's possible, okay? So not in this case here. So the main finding is that atrial flutter. And then the other thing to note is that there are also some nonspecific ST T wave abnormalities, okay? So if you look at lead one, you can kind of see some of that uh, down sloping there, uh, maybe AVL, some flattening, not consistent. It's likely a result of the underlying atrial flutter rhythm, uh, but you want to uh, make sure you keep that in mind. So the final, uh, a few things that you should look for. So this is atrial flutter uh, is the key, key thing, okay? And then we said this is a typical form, so typical atrial flutter, and with, there is that four to one AV conduction. So that's one, and the second one is the nonspecific STT with abnormalities, okay? So those are the main two findings. The mean QRS and the T wave axes were both Within normal limits, the QRS axis was positive 73 degrees, the T wave axis positive 83 together degrees, both normal within normal relation to each other. So in conclusion, the following should be interpreted in this case, typical atrial flutter with four to one AV conduction and nonspecific STT abnormalities. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. I hope you found that case helpful. You learned something and took something away that you can use to benefit the patients you care for or even teach it to some of your students. 
Again, thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't registered, register for free at practice.ekgguy.com or follow us on Facebook uh, and stay in touch.